Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's Trey, and I want to kind of talk about Michael Keaton's Batman because the reason why I want to talk about Michael Keaton's Batman is because, as you know, the Flash flopped, and I gotta wonder. All of this hype about Michael Keaton's Batman. He's the greatest Batman of all time and stuff like that. Why the hell y'all didn't show up for him? That's what I want to know. And the reason why I want to talk about it because I always hear, because I, you know, I watch videos from a lot of different people, but I always run into people from Midnight's Edge and Tom definitely. I got, um, will always talk about how amazing Michael Keaton's Batman is and how terrible Zack Snyder is and how amazing James Gunn is, you know, being a, a whole entire dick rider, right? And it got me wondering, like, with all of this talk about how great Michael Keaton is, why the fuck y'all didn't show up for him? Like, you get what I'm saying? Like, I, I don't understand that to me. Why are we making excuses? Because that, that's, that's, that's basically what I be wanting to know. Why are we making excuses? Michael Keaton's the best Batman ever, but for some reason, y'all couldn't show up to the Flash movie with him in it, because that's what Warner Brothers was betting on, and and I understand, even with the whole Ezra Miller thing, the whole, um, controversy, the fact of the matter is, everybody was talking about how amazing this is, Michael Keaton's awesome, woo, 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 and it has to, it, it goes back to how I said that some people need to learn how to fucking let go of the Christopher Reed Superman. You gotta let go of the Michael Keaton's Batman thing too, because honestly, it's been almost forty years for some of us. I mean, for some y'all, and it's been sixty years, almost. I don't know. I'm uh, my math is a little bit off for the Christopher Reeves because anytime I hear criticism, especially from the you know the um the popular the popular folks, you know what I'm saying, the ones that always be talking about. Um, how terrible the DCU movies are, and but and Star Wars suck, you know, those kind of people, right? Nine times out of ten, I hear all they keep talking about is, well, this is not Batman, this is not this character. Um, now I don't really know about the Star Wars stuff, but that's not the here nor there. But when they talk about Batman and Superman, they only have what Michael Keaton and Christ Christopher Reeves Superman was, and it's just like motherfuckers pick up a fucking comic book watch other shows and adaptations of these characters batman and superman have evolved and changed past michael keaton's batman and christopher reed superman you gotta remember there's a new generation coming up there's other people coming up who will will uh, will tell um disagree and tell you chris christian bell is um ben affleck henry cavill you know, actual, no offense, like, with all due respect to Michael Keaton, Michael Keaton is amazing, but his time has passed, he's not somebody who you can just put on there and be like, oh, yeah, this will get people, um, excited, when, when I tell you people are excited when they hear Ben Affleck, um, Henry Cavill, Robert Patterson, for God's sakes, people show up for that, because they have name brand just by name alone, while Michael Keenan back in the day, yes, but no, not really, not not today. And it's kind of funny because if we really want to end, if we really want to go back to that Batman, Michael Keenan's Batman actually ended with Batman and Robin George, um, George Clooney, Batman chronologically. So honestly, in the Flash movie, it really should have been George Clooney's Batman um, fighting with the Flash and not Michael Keenan's Batman. And I understand some of y'all want to try to keep that separate or whatever, but honestly, if you're going if you're going to go in the timeline chronologically, the old Batman would actually be George Clooney, not Michael Keaton's Batman. And honestly, I think that would have been better because honestly, again, George Clooney brings names. He brings butts to the seats. Y'all can get mad all you want to. I'm just telling the truth compared to... Michael Keaton, when we're talking about these characters, George Clooney, um, Robert Patterson, um, Henry Cavill, Ben Affleck, you know, some of these people, I mean, not, not Henry Cavill, because Henry Cavill's not, not a, not a um, Batman, but I'm just being honest, I'm trying, I'm, I'm just saying, like, when you have names like that, I'm sorry, Michael Keaton's gonna be the least, the least popular, and the least attention-grabbing 
then people like George Clooney, um, Robert Pattinson, Ben Affleck, Christian Bale. I'm sorry, it is what it is, but that is what it is. But it's just kind of funny how everybody always keep. It's funny because you hear the same old, same old about, oh man, but, um, but, um, Michael Keaton's Batman is amazing. Ben Affleck's Batman was nowhere close to being being great or whatever and stuff like that. But it's just like, okay, but why a movie in, with his return is the lowest performing DC movie compared to when Ben Affleck was Batman in in um in the uh, team up movies? And remember, Ben Affleck never had a solo movie. You get what I'm saying? Christian Bale had movie. Um, Robert Patterson, even if it did struggle to get to that 748 million, it still had it still had legs. You didn't have legs with this one, and that's all DC was pushing was Michael Keaton's Batman, Michael Keaton's Batman, Michael Keaton's Batman. And I already told people, I said it is not what you think. It will never be what you think. You cannot market on Michael Keaton's Batman alone. It is not going to work. And I was right because. The people who grew up with uh, Michael Keaton's Batman, they're older. And it's not a lot of them left around. No offense. It's the same thing with Christopher Reeve's um, Superman. Yes, it's amazing that they did these movies or whatever. But a lot of people haven't seen these movies like that. You get what I'm saying? So there, a lot of uh, a lot of that has been lost in culture zeitgeist. This isn't like some Kevin Conroy where... He's been the voice of Batman for a long time in so much media entertainment that he's always going to be in your head for like Batman voices. You know what I'm saying? But Michael Keaton, after the second Batman movie, he was gone and we got Val Kilmer. And then after that, we got George Clooney. You know what I'm saying? And usually when they promote Batman stuff from the um, Tim Burton stuff, it took years after... Batman and Robin, when y'all put that shit on hiatus, when y'all finally wanted to promote Michael Keaton's Batman, but by then, we had already got Christian Bale, and we had already got Ben Affleck by that time, so the culture zeitgeist had already changed for what they see and what they see for Batman, and that's, that's not the fault of the fans, that's the fault of WB, but you can't bring it back now and expect, like, I wonder why people didn't show up for our Flash movie. And Lord and behold, hell, Batman barely was in the movie like like that in, in the first place. So you did a Flash movie using Supergirl and, I mean, well, Race Swap Supergirl and um, old Batman, Michael Keaton's Batman, which, again, still doesn't make any sense to, um, chronologically. You know what I'm saying? Like... And you wonder why the movie didn't really work, but again, it always it goes back to the same thing when people always run and try to talk about how much of Zack Snyder is a failure. I want to go back and be like, okay, then if the if the Snyder Bros are at fault because that's what um, a few of those same kind of people I just mentioned earlier want to be like, oh, it's Snyder fault because they didn't show up for the Flash movie. Why the fuck would they show up for the Flash movie? What what is what is really giving me the ability to show up for the Flash movie when you're talking about rebooting the universe. Um, I'm never going to get the finished story that Zack had. So, again, why would I show up for it if I'm a fan of Zack Snyder's stuff? And even then, even if I'm not a fan of Zack Snyder's stuff, why y'all didn't show up for the movie? Y'all keep... Y'all, y'all talk a big game, but when the box office numbers are there, when the numbers are there telling you that people didn't show up for it, Y'all want to make 500 million excuses for Gunn and um, Warner Brothers and stuff like that. But then when it came to Snyder, oh, it's all Snyder's fault. The reason why this stuff happened, uh, failed. But then Snyder hasn't even been working with the DC stuff for years. So, again, what's the excuse now? You get what I'm saying? Like, it just doesn't, it doesn't add up to me, honestly. Like, I, I don't get it. I really don't. I don't get it. What's the excuse? If Snyder hasn't worked on a DC movie um, since the, what, since six years ago, I, be, uh, I believe, then why all the movies after he left, like after Aquaman, why did they underperform? 
the quote unquote real DC fans because nobody likes Snyder stuff. Oh, they're just a vocal minority. Okay, then. So if people claim that Michael Keaton's Batman is such a great Batman, why you didn't show up for The Flash? Why you didn't show up for that? It didn't talk about Kevin Smith on you know, his podcast was talking about that in order for um, Michael Keaton could have got um, could have got a Batman Beyond movie featuring him if the Flash movie did well. Why? Why? Why do I have to go and watch a terrible ass movie for you to give me something I actually wanted? Um, WB, you see how dumb that is? And again, it still goes back to all those people who are talking about how amazing Michael Keaton Batman is. And I have already told you, no, he's really not. Because honestly, I never agree with Michael Keaton's Batman being a good Batman. I think he's probably one of the worst Batmans, honestly. And I, and that's coming from somebody who actually watched the movie. I didn't grow up with Michael Keaton Batman because I wasn't even thought about, honestly. Because honestly, my Batman, the Batman that I had when I was growing up, besides Kevin Conroy, was honestly actually... Um, was actually what's what's that damn fool name? George Clooney. That was the last Batman live action character I've ever seen, honestly. So that was the Batman I saw when I was growing up, and then of course Adam West, Batman. But still, I never really had a connection to Adam West or Michael Keaton, honestly. So when I'm watching the Batman movies, they're great and all, the aesthetics is cool, but um. Honestly, I always thought Michael Keaton was a terrible choice, and I still think he's a ter- he was a terrible choice for Batman. Didn't make any sense to me. So, I mean, if you really want to damn talk, I really don't think he pulled off a good Batman at all. Honestly, that, and that's just my personal opinion. And I've watched the Batman um, 89 and Batman Returns several times over... I have the movies on Blu-ray, DVD, sets, VHS. I have them. So don't sit up here and try to talk about, oh, I don't know what I'm talking about. Just because I didn't grow up with him and because I wasn't a thought about it at the time, um, when that movie came, when those movies came out, doesn't mean I don't know what I'm talking about. I used to sit up there and watch them all the time. And even then, I always felt unease with uh, Michael Keaton's Batman. But again... It goes back to the fact that a lot of y'all talk this big game about how amazing this person is. But then again, when when it's time to show up and show out, y'all, you, you know, it's like crickets. I'm sorry, it is. It's like crickets. So it just makes you wonder, is it all talk when it comes to some of this stuff? Yeah, it really is. Because again, Michael Keenan hyping them up. Um, the only good thing about the Flash movie is that they were able to sell Batman merchandise for it. But um, they've been selling Batman merchandise even before the Flash because, I mean, Todd McFarlane makes a almost a new Batman figurine almost every other week. So at this point, it's not shocking. You know what I'm saying? But let's let's not kid ourselves. Michael Keaton really wasn't all that of a Batman like you guys talked about. And that's just real talk. But yeah, those are my thoughts. Tell me what you guys think in the comments below. Did you agree with what I said? Do you feel like uh, Michael Keaton is the best Batman? And do why do you think people didn't show up for Michael Keaton's Batman outside of all of the Ezra Miller bullshit? Why didn't people show up for their favorite Batman? But let me know in the comments section below. And follow me on my socials and all that good stuff. And links are down in the description below. And I'll catch you guys later. Peace out.